and he really wanted this service. So when I came there all prepared to help him, I leaned back just one more time, just on a whim, and got very close to him and I said, do you really want to go through with this? And he, and he, and he could barely speak, but he, was, he made some sound like, no. I packed up my things and left. Right now, if someone were to come back to you, doctor, and present themselves in a similar situation, I'm in great pain, I'm terminal, I'm going to die, I want your help to die, would you help them? No. Why not? Why should I go to prison again? So if that weren't a consideration, you would? Well, sure it is, isn't it? You got, I lost one-tenth of my life already in prison. I'm not going to lose the rest at this age. But The we, law is bad. It's immoral. Right. You don't need a law to practice medicine. You don't tell how, how to do a heart transplant with laws. You don't tell how to treat a cold with laws. The medical profession handles it, and that's the problem. The medical profession opposes this, calls it almost criminal, is not, it is not ethical, and therefore the law steps in. The medical profession, the AMA, is to blame for this controversy. What about uh, your view of life? I know how your view of death and that people should freely entertain it if they're in great pain and suffering, but you had been arguing that life itself can stink, right? I mean, it, you sound like a very depressed guy in life itself, that it's painful, that it's almost a waste of time. Am I reading that right? No, the, the, the body stinks when you die, not life. But life you, is an abstraction. Yeah, it, it, you, would, you would have been saying in the past that uh, with all its hardships and all its tediousness uh, and without some of the rights that I talk about, quoting you earlier, life is not worth living. What did you mean by that? Well, I'm not the only one to say that. Some big philosophers have said it. Schopenhauer said it. I mean, some anthropologists have said it. I mean, some people don't feel life is worth living. I had a young te a girl in her, her early, early teens who uh, wrote to me and said, I just don't want to be here. I've just felt this way all my life. I don't want to be here. And she's been through all kinds of psychiatric tra treatment, diagnosis, had even convulsive therapy. It didn't help. She says, I'm not depressed. I don't have any pain. I do not want to be here. Now, what do you do with that case like that? But I, I guess the reason why I asked, doctor, is you would also said, as someone who, who had never been married, never had children, I think you said that you'd never loved, that uh, I would rather not have been born. Who needed this goddamn going to jail and all this trouble? You know, what good did it do? It doesn't do any good anyway. That sounded like a guy almost ready to cash it in. Well, that's because you, uh, I, I am not, I'm, I'm, I'm realistic. That's what saves me. I, I felt that way long ago. I uh, analyzed it as a kid. I was about 10 or 11 years old. I says, is it worth going through all this? No. And all my life I said, had I a choice, I would have cho chosen not to be born. What's do you, wrong st with do that? you still feel I, that I, way? I, there do was you, no do misery. You, do you, after all you've been through, do, do you still feel that way? That yeah, it would have been better as as had I'm Dr. Healthy, Jack Kevorkian had never been born. Had I never been born, and I was, uh, uh, I mean, if I was uh, being born, as long as I'm not pained in pain or suffering or terribly depressed chronically, I would say it's worth going on. But when the time comes when it's not worth going on, no. I would say then it would have been better, perhaps, had I never been born. I don't think the ups and downs are even. I think the downs in life are greater than the ups. Has it been that kind of life? It's for, I think, every... Talk to people in Iraq, Afghanistan. Ask them if they, if they were glad to be born. All right, doctor, can you stick around? I do want to move on to health care, and, and, and I know your, your brief shot at a political career, how that went. You did better than a lot of folks thought when you ran for Congress. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and, and what your future plans are. More with Dr. Jack Kevorkian. Okay. Better to this. All right, continuing right now with Dr. Jack Kevorkian. And, Doctor, good to have you back. And, and you know, a lot of people know you by that other name. I didn't know it ever went down with you, but Dr. Death. Did that bother you that that was sort of like your nickname, Dr. Death, Dr. Death? 
Never, n never. One of my research projects way back when I was training in pathology uh, was uh, concerned uh, people who were on the verge of death and uh, I used to make rounds to, to uh, uh, see who was, who was at that stage and the nurses coined the phrase and, uh, and my friends called me that too. And you were okay with it? Why? What's wrong with death? Death is not what you think it is. It's, it's a part of life. It's a part of nature. We're just made afraid of it. Let me ask you a little bit about, since your, your mercy killings, however you want to look at it, Oregon, Washington, Montana, among those either having such laws in effect now, which would allow you to do what you did, um, or considering it. And, and many have been wondering whether others quickly follow suit and under health care reform, whether many more will. What do you think? Well, I suppose many more will, but they're, they're all doing it wrong. A what doctor do can't be involved. Well, a doctor can't be involved. He, if a doctor hands a pill to a patient, he'll be charged and put in prison. Now, where's the AMA on this? Does the AMA support those laws in Oregon and Washington or no? I don't know. Do they? If the AMA doesn't point. support them, well, I'm sure they're going to say no because they want to keep their stand that they're against this. Why? How can you be against a legitimate medical service that was widely practiced in ancient Greece and Rome and Hippocrates' day and by all the philosophers who agreed with it? Why would you s suddenly make it a crime? You can't make a crime with a law anyway. You can just stop a person from using a right. But you That's know, Dr. Do, your, your name has been used and sometimes not used or indirectly mm -hmm. referred to in this health care reform debate. The President of the United States himself indicating when it comes to caring for our elderly um, that, that some tough decisions are sometimes in order. This is from the President earlier. What you can't do, or you can but you shouldn't do, is start saying things like, we want to set up death panels to pull the plug on grandma. I mean, come on. Well, what did you make, what did you the, make of that? Uh, that's, how the, that's how the religious people think because their mind is kind of in a straitjacket, you know. Religion puts your mind in a straitjacket. You can't say what, what isn't in the creed. Edison, Emerson said it nicely. He said, as prayers are the... Uh, uh, weakness of the will, so are our creeds a weakness of, no, prayers are the uh, 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 weakness of, uh, of something. Creeds are weakness of, of will. Uh, all religion is to make you conform to the, a different way of thinking that you feel naturally. All right, and then it leads us naturally to grandmothers. This is from the president. Listen to this. That at least we can let doctors know and your mom know that, you know what, maybe this isn't going to help. Maybe you're better off uh, not having the surgery, but taking uh, the painkiller. What do you think he meant by that? I didn't get the whole question. What was it? Well, that sometimes in these kind of things, especially with an older person, you do make choices. That, that uh, is it the surgery or do you opt for a pill, not necessarily a death pill, but that, that sometimes there are hard financial choices to make, leaving religion out of it. It's just... It's a hard financial decision, and in health care, that's it. Well, that's true, but that's the doctor's job. He's the only one that can, uh, can uh, lay out the options and explain all the details of each option. He's the only one. Who else? Um, if you don't mind my switching gears, doctor, but I wanted to raise this with you knowing when you were coming, the whole Michael Jackson furor and whether he was murdered and this report now that uh, he was given propofol and that... Uh, given in the doses it was given was fatal and, and uh, tantamount to, to murder. What do you think of that? Do you think the doctor who gave him that murdered him? No, I don't think he was malicious. That's a, you know, murder is def defined as malice of forethought. Did, was he, did he have that a forethought? I doubt it. Maybe uh, Jackson himself just uh, craved these things so much, he pestered the doctor who gave it to him just to keep him quiet. But the patient got what he wanted. So this was Michael Jackson's doing, not the doctor's doing? Well, he's the one who says yes or no to take a, to take a drug. Okay. Finally, I, 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 
you're a controversial figure. People don't know this about you, but a lot of those assisted suicides, you didn't get a penny.